Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about Dell Precision T5600 workstation memory upgrade kits and how to properly load the system. Well, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell Precision T5600 workstation. Uh, do us a favor and click the like and smash that subscribe if you find anything useful here today. Well, let's get started. Uh, first things first, there are uh, two CPUs inside. It utilizes Intel Xeon E5 2600 V1 series CPUs which is an LGA 2011 socket. Uh, there are eight DIMM slots inside. It utilizes DDR3 memory. Uh, there are a couple different speeds that you can use for this machine. You can go as low as uh, 1066, uh, 1333, or all the way up to 1600 megahertz. Uh, there's a couple different sizes as well that you can use. You can go as low as a 2 gig, which we definitely recommend, or a 4 gig, 8 gig, or all the way up to a 16 gig. We hear a lot from uh, consumers, hey, can we put in 32 gig uh, modules in this machine? Unfortunately, you cannot. 16 gigs is the max per DIMM that you can use for the uh, uh, Dell Precision T5600. Um, on that note, there are two types of RAM that you can put inside this machine. You can put in ECC registered, also known as RDIM, or you can put in ECC unbuffered, which is a server UDIM. Uh, we hear a lot from customers, can we use LR DIMs? No, unfortunately, you cannot put load reduced memory. It is either the, uh, the ECC registered module or the ECC unbuffered module. Those are your two choices. Um, and, and people ask, well, what do you recommend? Personally, what I always am going to uh, lean towards is ECC registered for a number of reasons. One, um, you can get a higher max configuration. And two, it's cheaper overall. Uh, so if, you know, just talking about bang for your buck, ECC registered all day. So on that note, uh, ECC registered, the max that you can get is 128 gigabytes using eight 16 gigs at 1600 megahertz. ECC on buffered, on the other hand, the max you can get is only 32 gigabytes using eight four gigs again at 1600 megahertz. So you can see that there's really some advantages to ECC registered, which is why we're always going to lean that way. Uh, we actually don't even on our website list uh, ECC and buffered as an option uh, because really from a price standpoint, it just it doesn't make sense. So we always push towards ECC registered for our customers. So uh, on that note, uh, let's go ahead and open this machine up. Uh, I want to show you a little bit more about how to actually install the DIMMs. Um, if you um, are installing them and you're not putting in the max, uh, how what slots to put them in, um, and all that good stuff. But before we do, I'm gonna actually grab my ESD gear. Really, you never want to be inside a machine without your ESD gear. And I get it. A lot of people at home that are probably watching this that use this as um, you know a gaming uh, a workstation or as a just office workstation for their house. Uh, you're probably not gonna have the ESD gear. So here's what I recommend in that situation: one, uh, just don't do it on carpet, especially that that uh, that shaggy carpet uh, that just has a ton of electrostatic on it. Uh, you don't want to do it in an environment like that and two it's also very helpful helpful to just touch a piece of metal uh, especially something like copper this will actually help dissipate some of the uh, electrostatic discharge on your hands so that when you're touching it you're just a little bit safer a couple of just easy things that you can do that will uh, just protect your machine and protect the parts inside so we're, uh, we're gonna go grab our gear and I'll be right back all right now that we have our ESD gear and we're safe to open the machine very simply just gonna pop the latch open pull the top off very, very simple, very, very easy. All right, now that we are in, um, what I'm gonna personally do, I mean, you can kind of work around it, but I think it's easier, is if we remove this uh, cage right here. So we're just gonna lift this up, and you're gonna notice this pops open. I'm gonna just set it to the, uh, to the side right here. If the cables are long enough that they will reach, um, probably not the ideal solution, but for the sake of making a video, and wanting you guys to be able to see inside the machine, I'm going to put it over there. So uh, now that we're in, uh, you will notice that there are two CPUs. Currently, only one is installed. I'm actually going to install the CPU uh, right after this video, so we're just going to do the modules for now. Uh, but you'll see there's CPU 1. CPU 1 controls the four DIMM slots up here. CPU 2 is going to control the four DIMM slots back here. Um, and this is actually a, a good thing to note because if you didn't have, uh, if you only had one CPU installed here and you didn't have a CPU installed back here, the modules, if you install them in these uh, DIMM slots, they physically won't register. Um, they they have to have a CPU to register. It uh, might be kind of obvious for some people, but other people might be putting them in the back, not realizing that they need another CPU, and you have to have uh, two CPUs if you want to get uh, every single channel to work. Okay. On that note, um, one of the things that's pretty cool about this machine as a whole is that each DIMM slot is its own channel, which is kind of cool. So there are four channels per CPU and one DIMM slot per channel. I always thought that was kind of cool. So, uh, and Dell has done uh, uh, us a, a favor 
and they have labeled everything uh, so if you look on the actual motherboard itself it will tell you uh, that this is uh, right here this is CPU one dim slot one and then if you come over to the outside this is uh, CPU one dim slot two right and then if you come back over here on the inside here is CPU one dim slot three and come back over here and on the inside is CPU one dim slot four so basically it goes one two three four so if you were only installing let's say two modules with one CPU you don't want to put them on the outside slots okay so hopefully that makes sense to everybody and if you have any questions you know feel free to uh, drop a comment in the uh, the comment section of the video and we can help you out with that so um, that being said now I'm gonna go ahead and actually physically install them uh, we have some 16 gig um, DDR3 ECC registered um, uh, 1600 megahertz modules here so that'll be the top line for this machine so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that but before I do I wanted to note a couple things for you right here on the module itself you will notice a notch which is known as a key this key is very important uh, this key is uh, there for a number of reasons it prevents users from loading the wrong memory uh, and it also is important because if you look at the dim slot itself there is a notch on the dim slot so if you were to insert the module the wrong way because the, the key is not in the the dead middle it's it's off a little bit so since it's not completely centered you could put the the notch in the wrong place which would either damage the module or damage the dim slot which could potentially mean you have to buy a new motherboard so just a simple thing like how to properly insert the module is important and uh, it, it's also uh, good to note that the uh, the the module on this side is going to be facing this way but it actually flips when it goes over here so when you're getting a good groove and you're just loading them and you're loading them and you're feeling good it flips all of a sudden on you and it's real easy not to notice that and I don't care if you've been a technician 20 years anyone can make that mistake um, so just simple things that uh, you just got to be really careful about so anyhow now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to physically do it we're gonna go ahead and start over here with dim slot one uh, I need to flip the module around and it is now properly uh, properly set up to be inserted okay so now that I have the module on I want to note for you guys uh, you'll see the module it's standing by itself I'm not holding the module it looks like the modules in uh, the module is actually not fully inserted right now uh, a common error that we hear from customers is uh, that they think the uh, that the module is bad uh, when they have not fully inserted a module so we'll tell people just to uh, move their modules around and really why we're telling them to do that is just so they can properly uh, reseat everything so this is what you want to look for right here so listen for this click hear that click it's going to be on both sides that's basically the tab is popping basically this part of the module these little uh, grooves that you see on the side here these little notches the tab is actually locking them in and pulling the module down and inserting it properly okay so we're gonna go ahead and do it again I want you to listen for it the second time it's just a simple little click that you're really looking for so you're gonna hear it twice one two both sides okay so it's really simple uh, I, you know I'm not trying to make too much out of it but it is a problem that we see a lot so I always like to just kind of emphasize it because I feel like it is one of the more common uh, user errors uh, out there and something like I said that uh, you know an experienced technician or, or a newbie could easily run into and easily make that mistake I can't tell you how many times I personally done it and even actually as I'm saying right here look at this module I didn't fully insert it. See this uh, tab sticking out here? I got talking and I'm not fully paying attention. You need to make sure you get two clicks right here. Okay, so really, like I just said, anyone can do it. It's, uh, it's an easy mistake. Uh, now, I'm actually going to install uh, another heatsink here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the modules in uh, just to kind of show you how we're doing it. And another thing I like to note, I had it done over here. Before I put modules in, I like to pop open all my tabs. Just makes it a little bit easier so I'm not fumbling around with the module. Uh, so that when I'm putting them in it just makes it a little bit easier and doesn't slow me down so so just like that you can see how easy it really is to install eight dims I mean in a matter of you know a few minutes five minutes from the start of just opening it and and putting modules inside I mean it's it's really an easy process 
And if you're at home and, and you're, you know, you're wary of doing this because you're not like a real technician, or you've never really done anything like this, I'll be honest, it is very easy. You do not have to be a technician to do this. Um, it's as simple as just following some of these steps, uh, popping in the modules and make sure that you're working with a reputable dealer that's given you um, the correct advice to make sure you're getting the correct modules. Um, and then just inserting them is very easy. So uh, if you guys need any help, like I said, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we would love to help you out and we'd love to um, you know, get you some upgrades. If you need upgrades, we have a ton of 16 gigs that just came in uh, that are perfect for this machine in particular. So uh, if you need any help, like I said, please reach out to sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. And if you made it this far, hey, do us a favor and uh, click that like and smash that subscribe. So uh, thank you guys for stopping by and I want to wish everyone a great day.